Hello and welcome to the Growth Podcast. I am your host, Matt Bellotti, and today we are doing a solo episode and I'm going to talk through the eight things that you need to do before we head into the new year or in the start of the new year. So the eight things to do with your growth team uh, in 2022. So the first is I recommend doing a major retro of the big initiatives that you did last year. So set aside a few hours for you and your team. Uh, If you have an office location or people are co-located in a certain geography, maybe do it as an in-person half-day thing. Um, But break down what did we set out to do so you could do it for the major initiatives that you had last year. What did we set out to do? What happened along the way? What were the results? What did we do with the results? What could we have done differently? And what learnings will we take with us next year? So if you don't usually do a retro for each of your major experiments, I would do that per experiment. If you already do retros for your big experiments, then do that as a zoom out. Like do it as a zoom out of what did we set out to do last year? Well, we set out to focus on activation, right? And break down that sort of macro approach that you had. And then two additional things that I think are just fun uh, conversations to have with your team are around what was your biggest uh, surprise of last year's or something that maybe there was low confidence that you thought it would work, or maybe you thought it would only have a small impact. And so what was the biggest surprise that everybody on the team had for something that did work and worked really well? And then the biggest letdown, like what was something that everyone was super confident about that didn't really work? uh, And maybe tease apart why it didn't work and, you know, where you can readjust your expectations moving forward. All right. The second thing I'm going to recommend is look at your partnerships that you have going on. Start with internal and then do externally. And by internally, I mean, look at the teams that you're working with across your company, the sales team, the marketing team, specific content teams, the product teams, whoever they might be. Assess who are you working well with today? Who are you not really working with? Where is there an opportunity to partner up and do even more? Leverage resources from another part of the business. Maybe it's a data team or an operations team or customer success team. You could treat the customer success team as an experiment uh, channel. So look at what they're doing today and say, how can we drive an experiment with the process that they have today? And uh, you do the same thing with support and sales. So look at those internal teams and say, what are we doing today? How can we extend our partnership? partnerships there and do even more. And then look externally, look at other people, maybe adjacent to your market or uh, things that would be a supplement to your product or service, something that could add on. See what's out there, see where you can have a one plus one equals three situation where you partner with them and you co-offer your services or you do discounting or cross-selling or whatever it might be. Um, Partnership opportunities is a big thing that I would look at as well. The next big thing is uh, reassess your current priorities. So at a highest, at the highest level, how are you structuring the teams? Uh, What are the teams going after? Are they going after monetization? Are they going after retention? What is the priority order of those things? Do you still agree with the order in which you're operating, right? The start of the year is a good time to reassess those big rocks and the, and the things that your teams are focusing on. Uh, I would also ask yourself, has something happened this past year that is relevant to your priorities moving to forward? Have there been big market swings? Uh, are there new channels? Has the constant resurgence of COVID done things to your market? Are there ways that you can work with that, work around it? Um, are there strategic shifts within your company that open up new opportunities? These are the types of questions I would ask around your priorities rather than just kind of blindly rolling them over into, into the following year. The next is reassess your measurement system. So how are you actually tracking data? How are you collecting qualitative data? How are you collecting and analyzing quantitative data? Uh, Are the ways that you're measuring today actually servicing you in the ways that you need? Are they helping you answer questions, right? Look Look at the data analyst processes that you have in the system that you're maintaining and spending time on and saying, do we still need to keep doing this? Are we getting a lot of value from it or not? All right. So the fifth thing I'm going to recommend is asking yourself, do your existing channels have more white space in them? Can they be supercharged? Or, you know, is your main channel through SEO? Is there a lot of more more that you can do there, right? It's a good opportunity to look at the things that maybe you felt have been maxed out that again, with the number four, maybe things have changed and leaves additional white space for you to do more and do new things there. So just look at the things that are working really well and just say, is there an opportunity to do more here uh, now that some time has passed? 
Number six is reassess your growth systems, your experiment systems, your process systems. How are you figuring out what to do next? How are you generating ideas? How are you and your teams executing? What is your process for measuring? What's your process for prioritizing? Look at the operating system that you have and see if there's any opportunity to tweak it, improve it, double down on parts of it, remove parts of it that maybe add burden to the team members, uh, or maybe look for gaps where things are missed today. Number seven, uh, I talked about this one in the um, NFT podcast that I did the other day, Growth Lessons from the World of NFTs. Uh, And number seven is, can you make a bet on community? The world of Web3 and crypto and all that, they're really growing in the ways that they are through community. And so I'd ask, is there a place where your customer type or target uh, accounts, is there a place where those people are hanging out today or where they're gathering, where they're sharing information? If not, is there a way for you to be the arbiter of that? Can you create those connections? Can you create a space uh, for those people to connect and have that grow organically from there? Uh, I think that that is one of the biggest opportunities that any type of company has, whether it's B2B, B2C, direct to consumer. Can you bring people together around the type of problem sets that you solve for uh, and get some organic growth going? Because I think the the community uh, and the brand awareness and all that is really, really making a resurgence in the coming years. And then the last uh, number eight is think about personal goals. Uh, work with, if you're the leader of the team, work with your team members and set the goals for each of the individuals on your team. Maybe, uh, or if this is a self-assessment, look at what do I want to learn? Do I want to be responsible for one really big win next year? Do I want to get better at idea, idea generation? Do I want to get better at uh, analyzing data, right? Just spend some time the same way that you think about the experiments for uh, the actual tactics of what you're doing. Spend some time mapping out some experiments for your own systems and you know create a if you want to get better with creative stuff create a process where you book an hour once a week and you sit down and you generate ideas or you look at competitors or people in the market and see what they're doing right look at yourself say what do i want to learn what is my growth (laughs) priority for next year Uh, and then set up your own experimentation and, and processes around making that happen all right i think that was a relatively quick episode probably a a little under 10 minutes here. Thank you so much for listening. I super appreciate it. Uh, There are many, many, many other great episodes with incredible experts and guests. So go ahead and check those out. If you like this, hit the subscribe button. We have some amazing content coming next year. Thank you for spending your time listening to this podcast. I know there's so many things you could be working on doing, listening to, watching, whatever it might be, you're spending it here and that matters a lot. If you are a fan, I would love a review, a written review on your favorite uh, podcast review system app. Uh, And then I think that's all for today. My email is mattatdrift.com. If you got any feedback, questions, comments, whatever it might be, uh, I am more than happy to hear it. And with that, I will sign off. Have a good one and I'll catch you on the next episode.